Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 82. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 9 or the PowerPoints for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, we're in chapter 9. We've already done two videos. We're talking about capital budgeting in more detail. In essence, what we're talking about is how to estimate the cash flows so we can do <clears throat> net present value, internal rate of return, um, calculations. So in turn, we can uh, have good information or decision criteria about whether to uh, buy a new asset or not. Now, let's go over to uh, PowerPoints here. We got to talk about cash flows, estimating cash flows. And if you're going to estimate cash flows, you got to know what the relevant cash flows for a project are. Here is our definition of a relevant cash flow. Incremental. What does that mean? The changes, the incremental cash flow changes, the difference between the future cash flows with a project and without. Well, let's look at some examples. Sunk costs. All right. So here we are. We're the firm. And we're going to um, investigate whether we want to start a new project. So we do some marketing, right? And we spend $500,000 on marketing or whatever it is, right? We spent it, we paid the marketer, they did the research. Now we're going to go and decide what kind of assets to buy. But guess what? The, the marketing research is already paid for. It has nothing to do. It is part of the cost for the firm. And guess what? It'll happen whether or not we take this project. Opportunity costs. For example, if you have some land that you paid for, five million bucks, you paid for it five years ago, and now all of a sudden you want to use that land for a new project. Well, the opportunity cost, you can't use the historical cost. Guess what you have to figure out? at minimum what the market value, what you could sell it for. And then, because um, we could sell it and we're not, we're going to take on this new project, that's an opportunity cost. So if it was worth six million bucks, we could sell it for six million bucks, we have to subtract that from our cash flows because we're giving up that um, opportunity to sell that land for six million bucks. Side effects erosion, another relevant um, incremental cash flow. For example, if we're selling a, a new product and we're going to lose sales from an existing product, that means it's that's called erosion. That or we, we not only could we have erosion, we could actually, because we're going to market our new product, it could I increase the sales of our existing products. So that would be a side effect. But those have to be considered, and we'll see an example of that coming up. Oh, changes in networking capital. What is networking capital? Remember, that's current assets minus current liabilities. That means things like cash. We might need extra cash to run this project. We might have extra accounts receivable. We might carry extra inventory. We might have extra accounts payable. Those are all networking capital. Those are relevant. This is just like earlier in chapter two, we did cash flows from assets. We had operating cash flows. We had to know what um, the cash was for any new assets and this. The, in essence, the, the difference between current assets and liability, which hopefully is uh, somewhat uh, current asset. So it's kind of like a short-term asset. Got to include it in your calculations. Guess what? Financing ca costs are um, not going to be included here. That's an external variable that's considered somewhere else. So when we look at our relevant cash flows for the project, we're not going to include financing costs. So before we did our earnings before in, uh, interest and tax, then we calculate our interest and tax. Um, well, guess what? We're not going to consider interest expense. All right, so those are just some examples of relevant cash flows. Let's go over to Excel, and we're going to see examples of most all of these uh, right here. Now let's take a look here at this example here. We have land we bought six years ago for uh, $5.5 million. Today, we have a market value on this land of $6 million. We're considering building a manufacturing plant on the land, which would cost us $19 million. And we have to fix up the land. We've got to do some grading, get the excavators and the bulldozers out there and fix up the land, which is going to cost 500000 
So what kind of costs are these? Well, this is a some uh, historical cost. We paid for this uh, this land six years ago. It's a sunk cost. Absolutely not part of our calculation. This is the relevant calculation because this is an opportunity cost. This means if we take on this project, we're giving up the $6 million we could sell this for. And when looking at an opportunity cost at minimum, you look at you know what you could sell the, the asset for. Uh, this is going to be a cost going out. And same with this. This is included in the uh, price of the asset. This is not relevant. And the rest of these are totally relevant for our cash flow estimation of future cash flows and doing our net present value, et cetera. Now, let's go ahead and figure out what the total cash flow out at time zero is for this asset. This is not in considering networking capital, just the uh, fixed asset. Well, we certainly are going to have to include our opportunity cost. We gave up that amount. We are going to certainly include the cost of our estimations for building the plant and also our uh, grading with all the excavators and bulldozers. So 25 million five hundred thousand would be our cash flow out at time zero. Now let's go look at some other examples. I'm going to click on sheet four. We'll talk about erosion. Oh, we're considering a building a new bulldozer. And we have two existing bulldozers, a D9 and a D9Q. Now we did a market study, and we got some numbers. So for our new bulldozer and our existing bulldozers, we estimated these were the units we would sell. Here's the price for each bulldozer. Ah, but um, and we can go ahead and calculate our sales for each one. Whatever the units are times the price. And then I copy this down. right? But these are not the relevant cash flows. These are relevant for the firm as a whole. But when you're analyzing a project, like uh, considering um, building a new bulldozer, you only look at the incremental cash flows. The standalone principle says we can analyze all the relevant cash flows for this one project alone and then come to some decision. Certainly, these hard cash flows are great for the whole firm, but we're only interested in the change. So change if the new line of bulldozers right here are introduced. Well, this is erosion, right? We're going to lose 700 sales of this uh, D9Q. But why would we get some increase? Well, sometimes you know you have a new marketing campaign. You got this new bulldozers, the, the buzz about it, and so they discover your product, right? So in this market study, we got an increase of 3,000 for existing D9, but a drop here. All right, so we're going to calculate our incremental cash flows associated with this project. They are not going to be these, and guess what? It's not going to be this either. This marketing cost, sure, the information we got from this help us create all of our estimates. And we're an integral part of deciding whether or not we should go ahead with this project. But forget it. We did the marketing study. We paid them. That's a sunk cost. It's already incurred. Because guess what? We paid for this. If we decide to take this new bulldozer project, we have to pay it. It's already paid. If we don't decide to take this new bulldozer project, we still have to pay it. So it's not relevant. It doesn't change in regard to taking this or not. All right, so the relevant cash flows for our D9 are is the change times our price. And now actually, uh, yeah, and then hit Enter. and. That's going to be an increase, which we like, but this will be a decrease, um, some erosion in one of our um, products. And then the relevant cash flows for our new bulldozer is just the total right there. All right, so when we add all of these together, Alt equals, there is the relevant sales cash flow. So that's an example number one. Let's go do example number two for erosion. We're talking about relevant cash flows. Now this one's a little bit more involved. Oh, we have an old product. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Old printing machine. The price of the old printing machine. 
the old printing machine uh, current yearly units sold, which we'll use to uh, es estimate any differences in the future. If the new unit, which is uh, this new printing machine here, is sold, old printing machine uh, yearly units sold, so they will go down. Right? Here's the new product. We have a new printing machine. Notice if we get this new printing machine, we're still going to sell some of the old machine. It's just the sales are going to go down a bit. The price of the new printing machine, expected sales units for the new printing machine, and we're going to manufacturing manufacture this printing machine. Right? Variable cost, that's VC, variable cost as a percentage of sales. Oh, so for our whole company, we estimate whenever we uh, make a, a printing machine, the variable costs are going to be 55% of the sales price or total sales. The depreciation on the new printing equipment, so that's the whole point of this. Do we uh, take on this new, uh, buy all the equipment to make this new printing machine? The, the, new, the project is whether we want to start making this new printing machine. All right, so we have depreciation on that. Um, and fixed cost for all of the equipment that we're considering buying is a million. Our tax rate is 0.34. And in this example, we just want to figure out if we can calculate the operating cash flow. Well, first, we've got to figure out our erosion in sales from the old printing machine. So, well, we're going to take the difference between this and this, right? Units before we took on this new project, estimation after. So we're going to lose some. So that's the difference. And uh, the sales price is right there. So that's uh, going to be ultimately a negative. We'll do all our negatives down here. That's a reduction. All right? Erosion in variable cost. Whoa, wait a second. Actually, let's go ahead and make this a negative. Now, wait a second. We're, we're going to lose some sales, right? Oh, but when we make a sale, right, we sell this one machine, we also, if we don't sell one machine, we also don't have that variable cost. So in this example here, we, this is the uh, total sales we're going to lose, but if we also can avoid some cost, this is going to be a plus. So I'm going to say equals 0.555 times, and then I'm going to do a negative to make this a positive, right? So 55%, we're going to lose these sales, but we're going to avoid these uh, costs. So what that means is a cost is going to be added. The incremental cost we avoid, the incremental sales we lose. All right, sales from new printing machine. So there is our new price. Boop times our um, estimated sales. We're also going to have to calculate, and that is going to be a plus, and I'll do this as a negative. How about that? Uh, that one times 55, that'll give us our variable cost for the new printing machine. Okay, Total fixed cost for the new, that's a, an outflow. So there's our fixed costs for the new printing machine. Right, and these are all estimates, estimates per year for a, a number of years. In this first couple examples, we're going to just stick to the one year. Depreciation for new printing machine for tax purposes before we figure out uh, uh, the tax. We're going to have to subtract this. So there it is. That's the depreciation for the new printing machine. And now we can calculate EBIT earnings before interest and tax. Now notice, we're not going to include interest because that is not a relevant cash. Finance, financing, whether uh, used equity or debt, is going to be considered somewhere else, not in the cash flow analysis for a new project. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, I think we can just straight add all these. There's uh, a subtraction in sales. There's this cost saving. That's uh, the cash flows from this new machine. Uh, variable cost, we're going to have to subtract that, S, S subtract, so we can just add these. Alt equals, so that's EBIT. And 
as I don't think I mentioned when we were looking over in the PowerPoints, uh, incremental cash flow means after tax incremental cash flow in all situations since uh, any new revenue or any new uh, cost incurred which is deductible on your tax statement is going to have a cash flow implication so here we're going to figure out the taxes and now I'm actually going to be a little inconsistent in this chapter. Uh, so far in this class, whenever we've calculated tax, we've used the round function, and I am going to use it right here. I'm going to say EBIT times our rate, comma, zero means round of the dollar. However, later in this class, we're going to use learn a tax shield approach to calculating operating cash flow. And when I do those, I'm not going to use the round. Ultimately, it's all estimates here anyway. So, But in this chapter, whenever I'm doing the individual tax in this method, I'll use round. Otherwise, I won't. Uh, all right, so we have our tax. Uh, the um, operating cash flow then becomes, oh, look at this, our EBIT minus our taxes. And what do we have to do? We have to add back depreciation. Well, this is a negative, so I'm going to subtract it. Now you add back the depreciation because that's a non-cash expense. Hey, this looks exactly like what we did in what? Chapter 2 when we did our cash flow analysis. EBIT minus taxes plus add back the depreciation. All right, so there is our estimate for operating cash flow. Um, in, we, in this video, we looked at what? Relevant costs. They are the incremental cash flows. And we saw some um, great examples. We saw sunk cost. We saw opportunity cost. We saw erosion. In this video, all we did was calculate operating cash flow. Our ultimate goal is to estimate all the actual cash flows associated with the project and then calculate net present value. Well, we'll do that for the first time next video. See you then.